Chelsea crushed out the Carabao Cup following a 2-0 defeat to Newcastle away from home and I'm disappointed. I am. Look, I'm not fuming, I'm not having a meltdown and I'm not overreacting about this defeat. But from the get-go, it felt like this game had been massively underestimated by Maresca. I don't know and I don't want to believe that this was done on purpose or that he regards this cup as uh, inferior to any other cup out there available. It's not exactly like we've been spoiled for choice uh, for which cup we want to win. And I did take it quite seriously. The fact that we've been on the brink of winning it twice in the last four years and have been unlucky to do so, but managed to do so even in a season as poor as last year, told me and made me feel like this year with the squad depth that we have with the better quality of football being played that those chances should have actually been elevated that we should have actually played better tried better and had an easier run to the final but no that's not been the case naive to think so too but also naive for Maresca if he was taking this cup seriously to set us up the way he did because it wasn't a secret to anyone that after losing against us at the weekend that Newcastle would welcome us at St James's Park with absolutely every fire in them to win it. We as, well, we as they were also, they as us were also on the brink of winning it against Manchester United not long ago. And how is absolutely set on winning a trophy with Newcastle. They really would have wanted it. They set us up with they set up with a strong team against us and I just think that we really shouldn't have rotated wholesale as we did it wasn't going to be easy and I even thought that our stronger team what we call our A team at the weekend also potentially could have just taken a point away if Newcastle had their shooting boots on so in what world did we really think that this would be an appropriate setup and the fact that our B team has only played in the kind of conference league games or in kind of against lower level opposition in the cup games. Newcastle are Premier League opposition. Maybe, yeah, okay, this was a chance for the B team, as we're calling it, to have a go and showcase their quality. But again, I don't think that we should have rotated as heavily as we did. But anyway, the game is now done. Let's talk about it because there's certain things that I didn't like and there are certain things that we'll have to improve. Big reality check but we let ourselves down massively and in hindsight the game was well and truly done inside five minutes. By 26 seven minutes the game was gone and the fact that Maresca only made one substitute as well is a bit telling isn't it that after two nil down he didn't really see much point in maybe risking injuries although there are players that will literally not play in the Premier League like Carney Chukwemeka like Cassidy so why did they not come on where my thoughts are out but I think he probably just wanted the game to be 2-0 maybe instead of 3-4 and potentially hope that Madweke could pull one back for us because we've seen that he's got the ability to do it. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it now, but honestly, it just felt like we needed a little bit of shift around and we could have conceded more. I mean, even five minutes into the game, I think it was Jolington had a chance at the far post where he hit the post, could have scored. Then we had an equal opportunity there on their end, but it just really was not our day. I do not want to say that this was a game where we were unlucky because it truly was about our errors and that's why we conceded however I do think and I look at players like Nkunku and I think he missed a little bit of luck so did Joao Felix I mean the fact that Nkunku scores these opportunities any other day and we've seen him do it at times he received balls even like from Mudrick and his legs just froze and he didn't really do much with it so again, it was Newcastle's night. They were the better team. Uh, they passed the ball much better than us. They didn't misplace that many passes as we did. But ultimately, they forced our defensive errors with the press they had in the first half. And yeah, props to them. Their, their game plan really, uh, really came through. And how probably has seen the games where this defense has played and seen that, you know, they do make errors. Our defense has been an area that we are still working on, both the Premier League one and the B team one. So that was an absolutely good way to expose us false errors. And with the first goal, I mean, Baddy Shield passes it into Vega, who's literally got Jolington coming onto him. Vega is waiting too, waiting for the ball to come to him, but it's too late. He's already forced an error. And that's 
on Baddy Ashil too because you're the one that should be reading the game better. That was a poor way to play out the back and that has been a reoccurring thing where we've not been able to play out the back uh, as well as we, we should be. Jorgensen, I am disappointed, I must say. I'm not going to judge this player off this one game entirely, but the fact that he also had his what I will call Sanchez moments, um, did not really restore a lot of faith in me. And is that, is he to blame for the fact that, you know, we recruited goalkeepers that potentially aren't ready to be uh, Premier League goalkeepers? I don't know. It's not a bad thing that, you know, he's he's got quality. Okay, fantastic, but it's still got to be developed. And yeah, I, I did want to see a little bit more. I don't think he was awful and uh, he's certainly not to be blamed entirely for the goals because, again, defensively, he was let down by his back line too. But just a little food of thought there because I am someone that who someone who was and is advocating for Jorgensen to get a bit more game time, but now I'm not too sure. Um, and then, yeah, for the second goal shortly after, it was quite funny, actually, that the Sassy had the mental breakdown that he did when uh, we conceded that first only for him to um score the second goal um and yeah again just moments at the back where it was and needed to be better there was slip ups on across the field players looked like they were ice skating at times I don't know what that was about but misplacing passes I thought Enzo Fernandez did that himself in the first half uh, quite a bit but Overall, Newcastle looked like they had acres and acres of space in midfield at times. They used it really well. Um, it was very hard for us to transition the ball from midfield into our attack. And when we did, we just looked like we left our shooting boots at home. Joao Felix came close to scoring. He created that fantastic uh, opportunity for himself where maybe he should have passed it. Maybe he shouldn't. He decided to shoot really didn't manage to make anything of that. And then there was a similar situation later in the second half as well, where I don't know why I'm holding a pen here, but I am. Uh, there was a second goal. Well, there was a second goal scoring opportunity where Joao Felix again didn't score and everyone started bringing up the old times where Joao Felix's first spell at Chelsea resulted in often many uh, missed opportunities, missed chances. But again, that doesn't make Joao Felix a bad player. It doesn't make him a poor player. It doesn't mean that why did we bought him and all of that? I think that is a step too far exaggeration. And yeah, okay, he has scored in the games where we've played lower level opposition. But again, we all kind of agreed that this would these would be the games where he would get game time and some some games have indicated that maybe he should be getting a Premier League start others have not really in Kunku again already spoken about him I think he was it was a mixture of unlucky and also just poor in terms of finishing it is a game where even if you score one and it's 2-1 maybe it changes the dynamic of the game but we never got to get that far we never got to try that we never got to see it because um yeah, there was really nothing for us to take away from that game. So disappointed is the word. I don't think this is the end of the world. I did really want us to proceed into the next round of this cup. And the fact that, you know, we're looking at all the managers who have got the Carabao Cup there now for like, you know, Arteta there to win, Arna Slot to win in his first season, how to win um, when he almost did a couple seasons ago for um Ange to win uh, in his second season at Tottenham the, this is a cup that will do something for the team for the manager and it's not disregarded I don't favor one cup over another yes of course you can rank them for importance but at the end of the day silverware is silverware and when you haven't won a trophy you would and should want to win a trophy and again I don't believe in the bigger fish to fry ideology either that shouldn't be true we've got enough quality enough depth we have spent money um we should be absolutely competing in a quarter final for a Carabao Cup but that's just my opinion um however it's not the end of the world we move we've got a big game this weekend against Manchester United at Old Trafford our record there isn't one that fills me with confidence. They are going to have a new manager there. And of course, I mean, yes, that does really change things. They beat Leicester 5-2. So they'll be taking heaps of confidence into the weekend. But I think we absolutely need to just reset that Premier League A team, as we're calling it, needs to be refreshed. There's no excuses. None of them played. They weren't brought on. They weren't even traveling up with the team. So we should be refreshed. We should be reset. And it should hopefully be a win. Three points are crucial. So, uh, 
uh, yeah, guys, let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on the game. Oh, I do want to actually give a shout out, a bit of a shout out, a positive. I realised that this match review has been quite negative, and I mean, when the result is 2-1, um, it's hard to be positive. But I will say that Mudrick your efforts did not go unnoticed. The fact that he could have had an assist almost, he was the player that was consistently spamming crosses into the box and were actually directed and actually should have reached their target, but, you know, weren't always received by the player that they were um, cross to, pass to, etc. I think Midrick had a good game, so he can be proud of himself. And this is the thing, you know, with Chelsea, and it's like... Midrick's a player that we can't often consistently praise because he does have his days and he has his hot and cold moments, but it's never a case where we can praise the whole team collectively with Midrick maybe in it. He's always either the odd one out and either for a good or a bad reason. And it's, yeah, but that's just one thing with Midrick. But he's improved um, in the last couple games that he's played. He is taking his opportunities when he's getting them in this B team. So fair enough, Midrick. But yeah, so just to end there on a positive for you guys. We move. We are behind the team. It's not the end of the world. This is a team that's still learning. There is lots to take notes from. But we reset. And this only means that the Conference League is an absolute must win. Top four also. Uh, but the FA Cup, that would be domestic glory, would be good. You know, winning at Wembley, that'd be nice. But anyways, guys, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and you're a new viewer, you've just come across it. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and heard, then please hit that subscribe button to show your support. Also hit the like button, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.